Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Nate, the Director of Product Development here at Denali, and we are in the design lab with the Honda Africa Twin 1100. So if you've been following our little video series here, we're on about day five. Um, we've been developing all of our light mounts, our horn mounts, our vehicle-specific wiring adapters, and uh, at this point, we have all of our prototypes completed. So this video is going to cover all things auxiliary lighting. We're gonna show you guys uh, the mounts we've developed, how to get your lights mounted to the bike, how to get them wired using the new plug and play adapters that we developed. And of course, controlling the lights with our brand new lighting controllers. So stay tuned. So here's a quick look at our light mount prototype for the Africa Twin 1100. Um, we've developed this one on the Adventure Sports model. We suspect from our research that we might need to make a different one for the uh, standard model based on the different front end. Um, but this one here is super easy to install. We've got all of the fairings removed because we're doing a bunch of R&D, um, but it will not require removing any fairings. If we can get the camera under here, you can see that it bolts right up to the fairing stay and then just reaches two points on either side and it makes a rock solid light mount for mounting up uh, our largest lights in the line. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your lights mounted up to the bike. Now there's a lot of different configurations for setting up forward facing auxiliary lighting, but we always recommend some smaller visibility lights down low for maximum conspicuity during the day and then some larger distance lights for just maximum light output at night. Now we've mounted a pair of DMs down on our fender mount and we've mounted a pair of D7s on our brand new prototype bike specific mount for this Africa Twin 1100. So here we have the whole dial dim controller kit laid out on the desk and let's go over the various components of the kit. So right at the top, this is the brains of the whole unit. This is our controller. And off of the controller, most notably, is your four circuit leads. These are the two left and right light leads for your main lights. And these are the green circuit leads for your visibility lights or your second set of lights. Um, this is where you connect to batteries, typical battery leads and a fuse. And then this is where you plug in your switch. Here is the dial dim switch and that also comes with a handlebar uh, mounting band for motorcycle. Then the other part of the controller is that this controller has so many unique features that we access those features using our trigger wires. So this simply plugs into the harness and you can see here the various trigger wires to, to unlock all the features of this harness is going to be your ignition, right turn, left turn, her horn and high beam. Now, this is the complete universal version, which can just be posi-tapped into those circuits on any uh, motorcycle, Jeep, truck, ATV, anything. Um, but we also make plug and play components to make that portion of the install completely plug and play. And we'll show you that in just a second. And then we also include all the wiring length that you need. So there's four five foot extensions for routing all the way from the back of the vehicle up to the front where you mount all your lights. So to transform this kit from a universal product to a vehicle specific product, we just need to swap out this universal trigger wire harness for a vehicle specific one. So right here, we actually have the one that we just prototyped for the Africa Twin 1100. And you'll see instead of the five individual posi taps, this just plugs into the main controller and you have plug and play connection to the vehicle for all those same circuits. So this for the Africa Twin 1100 is a large 12 pin connector that's picking up high beam and switched power. This is a relay that we're using to actually convert the high beam trigger from ground switched to a positive trigger switch. And then you see routed to the back of the bike on the Africa Twin, this is gonna plug in line to pick up your left and right turn signals. And this is what you plug in to pick up your horn. So that's what we're gonna be putting in this Africa Twin 1100. And that's how you can see that we can easily transition this universal product into a vehicle specific one by the addition of one of these wiring harnesses. Okay, so right now we've got the whole dial dim harness installed in this Africa Twin 1100. We, uh, on this bike, the controller actually fits best right here up underneath the left side fairing. 
because of the location of the battery, we're able to route the wires right under the tank without having to move it right to the battery box here. And then off the controller comes the two blue circuits for your lights and the two green circuits for your lights. And then this is the main wiring adapter that you saw, that large 12 pin connector. This is what we're hooking up to the bike plug and play to get uh, access to the high beam trigger and the, and the switch power wire. And then the horn wire is routed right down, plugged into the horn. And the last thing that we had to do was to pick up turn signals. And on this bike, we actually had to pick it up in the rear because the rears actually cancel. They don't run. In the front, they run, so that would cause some funkiness. So our harness is long enough to come all the way back. And that's what these two um, turn signal connectors, the orange and the blue, are plug and played right in. And that is the complete install of the dial dim controller. It's really that simple. Then we're just hooking up our light leads to the controller. And remember again, your main lights, you're gonna wanna hook up to the blue circuit labeled left and right. And your visibility lights, you're gonna wanna hook up to the green circuit. And that's how we have this Africa Twin set up. So we're gonna throw the panel back on and show you how this thing works. So a quick tip for installing lights on the Africa Twin using our light mount because uh, we realized here that the light gets a little bit in your way when you're trying to put the fairing back on. A simple thing that you can do is once you have everything mocked up and you're everything wired and you're ready to button everything back up, just flip the light really quick on the mount, uh, hold it in place just for a second while you grab the fairing and clip that fairing back in. So we've routed the switch right up to the handlebars and you can see just how OEM that looks integrated on this switch gear here. Um, when we key the bike on, you're gonna get that green flash and that's actually a battery voltage monitor. So that's letting you know that your battery voltage is healthy. If your battery voltage was low, it would actually flash red. So that's one of the first unique things that our dialed in switch can do. So as far as controlling the lights, it's very simple. Um, you have a green circuit and a blue circuit that's color coded to the wires on your lead. So right now we see the green circuit and we can see that it's turned all the way up to high. If I wanna dim that down to zero or anywhere along the dial, I can just reach over from my handlebars and do that. If I wanna see what I have set on my main light circuit, simple double click and that's my D7s, my blue circuit that's currently dimmed to zero. So what I can show you while it's dimmed to zero, the reason that that's not off is because the lights will still flash with turn signals and they'll still turn on with your high beam. So this is a great option for running really high powered lights. So when I flick the high beam on, you're gonna see that those jump to 100%. So if we wanted to say, you know what, let's run these at 15% or let's say 45%, you just dial it up. Another cool thing I can show you is um, these are still gonna jump to full high beam, but if you were driving down the road and you wanna kill these lights, just reach over, roll it back, and you're down to zero. We'll double click, and now I'm looking at my green circuit here, and you can dial those up and down. So that's how you control the lights on and off. If you wanna shut either circuit off, it's just a press and hold. That's gonna shut off the green. Now your blues are the only one that are on. Press and hold, and now we've shut the whole system off. So now we're gonna to move to the front of the bike and show you what these things can do with the lights from the front. So now we're looking at the front of the bike so you can see all of these features in action. Um, so right now the bike's off, Greg's gonna key the bike on and we have both of our light sets off. So to turn on light set one is just a single click and that's the blue circuit. You'll see that light sets one is on, he can dim them up and down. Um, and then if you wanna turn on your second set, which is our amber DMs, it's just a double press of that center button and that's gonna be your green circuit and you can dim those up and down. So one of the coolest features that we baked in here is the canceling of the main light with your turn signal and the flashing of your visibility light with your turn signal. So that's an awesome feature and um, it works completely out of the box without any programming. The only thing you need to know is that if you want that feature, you simply plug in that portion of the plug and play adapter. If you don't want that feature, you just don't plug it in. So it gives you all the flexibility without having to mess with programming in the computer. 
And here we can take a look at what that high beam trigger does. Uh, the lights are just gonna jump from whatever intensity you have them up to full intensity with your factory high beam. And last but not least, we have the strobe with horn feature baked into the controller. So when you beep your horn, your lights are gonna strobe. And just like the turn signal feature, if you don't want that feature, you simply don't connect that piece of the wiring harness, and then you get to have whatever setting you want without having to mess with software. So the last feature we're gonna show you guys is probably one of the coolest things that the dial dim controller can do, and it is so unique. We haven't seen anything like this on the market before. We actually have a provisional patent out for it. And what it does is it's the ability to set the fuse values for each of your lighting circuits right from the switch. So Greg's gonna go ahead and turn this on. We've deliberately set the fuse low on this D7 circuit, so as he dials it up, the intensity up, it trips the circuit. So when the circuit trips, the halo turns red. Now it only turns red on the circuit that's tripped. So if he double clicks to go check out his, his DMs on the green circuit, they're still fully operational, no issue there. If he clicks back, we're gonna see that that D7 circuit is still tripped. So in order to reset this, you simply just press and hold and that's the same equivalent as turning off the lights. You're gonna to continue to hold, both lights turn off, another five seconds, and it's gonna enter the fuse setting mode. And that's um, recognized by the flashing halo. So that was the green fuse value setting mode, and now he's in the blue, and he's gonna dial this up to the desired fuse value and just uh, press to cancel out. In the instruction manual, as well as printed on the controller, on the inside of that ring, we show you guys those fuse value references so you can uh, understand exactly what each of those eight settings is as an intensity, but also as a fuse value when you're setting your fuse value mode. So now we can go ahead and turn everything back on and you'll see that he can dial those things to 100% intensity and everything is good to go. So now you guys can see it really is that simple to get a premium auxiliary lighting system on your Africa Twin 1100. I do want to point out that this dialed in controller is completely universal. So in this video, we use the vehicle specific component to plug it into this Africa Twin, but the main controller itself is completely universal, can be tapped into any vehicle from motorcycles to ATVs to Jeeps and trucks and we will continue to develop more of the vehicle specific plug and play components to make the installation on all of your other vehicles as simple as it was on this Africa Twin 1100. So please like and subscribe. We're gonna be putting uh, links down in the uh, description for all the products that we use um, and links back to DenaliElectronics.com where we go over all of these products and all of these installations in more detail. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.